This is the notes for section 12.3, similar figures. If you haven't done so already, make sure you pause the video at this time and read the section before continuing on. Um, so to, to talk about similar figures, what I want to do first is I want to go backwards a little bit. I want to go way back to chapter 4 when we were talking about isometries. And those were the first transformations that we looked at. So let's, let's just go back and take a look at, at what that was. At that time, these were the only uh, trans transformations that we knew of, and that basically was reflection, rotation, translation, and glide reflection. And remember we said all of those were um, isometries, or what we called congruence transformations. And the reason why we called them congruence transformations is no matter what, if we did any one of these four, we would always end up with a figure that was congruent to the figure that we started with. So we could basically move that figure anywhere on our page, and it would be one of these four transformations. But my figure that I ended up with would, was always congruent to the one that I started with. So in this section, what we want to do is we want to think about, well, what happens if we move our figure about our page using those 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 four isometries, but also including one more, the one more transformation that we've now learned, and that's a size change. So what happens if I perform size changes and isometries or congruence transformations to a figure? So in other words, if I take a figure and I do a size change and then do a reflection, or just do two size changes, or a size change and a glide reflection. Well, we get what we call a similar, what we get is, is similar figures. And we, we describe similar figures as two figures F and G are similar, written F is similar to G with that one, just a little one squiggly, if and only if there is a composite of size transformations and reflections mapping F onto G. Now remember, uh, composite of reflections is all of those isometries are composites of reflections. So that gives us what we call similar figures. Okay. Now the, the, the idea of these is called similarity transformation. So a, a, a transformation is a similarity transformation if and only if it is a composite of size transformations and reflections. So if I look at this chart down here, originally everything that we did was down here in these isometries, these four. Okay, now we're saying, all right, well, we have transformations, and there's similarity transformations. Well, all the isometries fall under that category of similarity transformations, because there's still a composite of reflections and size changes. It's just that there's no size changes involved in the isometries. Okay, and then the other ones are size changes. Okay. All of those fall under that category of similarity transformations. All right, so let's just talk a little bit more about what similar figures are in terms of how they look. Basically, when you're looking at similar figures, they're going to have the same shape, but they're going to have a different size because we've performed a size change on them. So I can say that F and F prime are similar to each other. Notice how they have the same shape as, you know, F and F prime, same shape. It's just that this one over here is bigger and has been slid over. So really what I've done here is I performed a size change of 3 following a translation on F. So I translated F, then I, then I made it 3 times as big to get F prime. Notice how they have the same shape but different sizes. So what does that mean if two shapes have, have the same shape but different sizes? Well, the similar figures theorem kind of tells us that in terms of our, the measurements within a figure. And generally when we're looking at a figure, we're looking at its angles and we're looking at the lengths of its sides. So if I look at the corresponding angles of, any, of two figures that are similar, they will always be congruent. So corresponding angles will be congruent. However, corresponding lengths will be proportional. In other words, the ratio between corresponding lengths on those two figures, those ratios will always be equal to each other. 
So as I look at these figures f and f prime, if I know they are similar to each other, what I know is that these angles, any pairs of angles that correspond, like these two angles, they would have to be congruent to each other. And I also know that if if I did a size change of 3, if this is, uh, we'll call this um, 2 inches, well then this here would have to be 6 inches. And that ratio would have to be consistent. So for instance, if this one right over here, we'll just call this 1 inch, well then this would have to be 3 inches. And you'll notice that the ratio with corresponding sides, 2 compared to 6, is exactly equal to the ratio of the other corresponding sides, 1 compared to 3. All right, let's take a look at example one here. It says, in this figure, uh, we do a um, reflection over line T following a size change of 2.2 on quad to get city. And the center of the size change of 2.2 is O. So that would be the point we're using to, to perform the size change. It says, what is the justification that quad is similar to city? Well. Our justification for that would just be the definition of similar. And the reason for that is the definition just says if we perform uh, reflections, composites of reflections and size changes, we get some more figures. And that's exactly what we did. Part B says, that the measure of angle A is 115, what other angle in city would also have to be, uh, have the same measure? Well, A corresponds with Y. Notice how they're in the same place here, and since I did that reflection, that would have to be true as well. Therefore, they would have to have the same measure, so this one would have to be 115 as well. And then finally, part C, it says DA is 8. What length in city can be determined and what is it? Well, DA corresponds with TY. So we're going to be finding this side right here. Well, if I did a size change of 2.2, that means that this side length has to be 2.2 times as big as this one. So if I take 8 times 2.2, I will have that value which would be 17.6. Ratio of similitude is uh, the same as a scale factor. And to find the ratio of similitude, and generally we will refer to that value as k, and the ratio of similitude or scale factor, and we're gonna, I'll probably be using those terms basically interchangeably, is if we take any image distance over any pre-image distance. Okay, It's that ratio between sides of similar figures, a uh, ratio that we know is consistent for all, so they're proportional. Okay, So uh, anytime we're looking for a ratio, similitude, or scale factor, that's what we're looking at. So let's take a look at this second example. It says refer to the triangle below from example 2. And remember in example 2, triangle ant was similar to triangle bug. And it says label n is 65, which I did, and t is 11, and an is 15, and bu is 12. And then it says find as many other angle measures in the triangle as possible. Well, if we only know one angle measure of this one, we're only going to know one angle measure of this one. And since n corresponds with um, u, what that means is that, that u must also be 65 degrees. And I'll put the, the new angles, or the new measurements in blue here. And then that's the only measure, angle measure that we can get because we don't know anything about the other two angles in, in the triangle over here on the left ant. 
And then if I look at part B, it says find as many other lengths of sides as possible. Well, what I know about the side lengths is that they're portional. So if I find two that correspond e with each other, and, and I know that um, B U corresponds with A N, okay? So that means if I look at the ratio between this side and this side, it has to be the same as the ratio between N T and U G. Okay, so I can say that, and it doesn't matter which one we we put as image and which one we put as primage, but I'm going to say 12 over 15 must be equal to um, UG over 11. Okay, so I can cross multiply and I can say 15 times UG is going to be equal to 11 times 12. And then I can divide both sides by 15 to find UG. Which gives me about 8.8. .8. Therefore, this distance here would have to be 8.8. .8, and that would be the only other size, side length that we could find.